Okay, we're we're actually just live now on the STSG Facebook page. So I'll just give people 10 or 15 seconds just to get notified and to join in and we'll make a start um, very quickly. Okay. Um, okay, I think we just get started and um, people can join in as we go and, and they can watch also later on when it's up on the Facebook page and, and YouTube. So, um, okay, I'd just like to welcome everybody um, to today's event. Um, we're, we were absolutely delighted in Sligo Traveller Support Group to be asked to um, work with Kids Own uh, Publishing on the, the official launch of um, the reprint of uh, Can't Lose Can't. Um, it's a very, very important book. It was an important book when it was initially published and it's as important, if not more important um, today. So we're delighted to be involved in, 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 in the, the launch of the new edition with a forward, new forward by uh, one of our panellists as well, Owen de Vardun. So we are, and uh, Mary is very kindly holding up a, a picture of, of, of the book. So it's, it's, it's an important book, an important event. Um, ourselves at STSG, you know, we do a lot of work around a lot of different issues on that impact the traveling community. Um, and unfortunately, we, we see like with with most um, other projects and organizations that um, the traveling community have been marginalized and excluded across across Irish society for for generations, whether that's in in employment or um, education um you know housing there's you know there's a whole range of social areas that um travelers are have been marginalized and excluded in and unfortunately education is is one of those so that's probably something we're going to touch on today with our with our panelists um and that's why it's such an important book um because you know the fact that the you know the the, the ethnic minority the indigenous people of our own country are are not represented um to any great extent, if any at all, in our, our curriculum uh, across any of the subjects. So that's why books and events like today are important um, to, to have. So I'm not going to hold you too long. I just want to give you a pre brief introduction to some of our panellists here today. Um, I'll go from the person I can see first beside me on the screen. We have Anne-Marie Collins. Anne-Marie is a teacher and educational activist and is the cre creator of a traveller community uh, teaching resource. So thank you, Anne-Marie. We have Owen de Vardun. Uh, Owen has been active in, in many, many different um, campaigns on issues in impact the traveling community and most recently is, was um, the author and has published uh, Why the Moon Travels. And uh, one of the reviews described the book as the, uh, tales rooted in the Irish tradition, oral tradition of the Irish traveller community. Um, we also are delighted to have with us um, Senator Eileen Flynn. Eileen, again, is, is, a, is a long time community um, activist and on, on a range of different issues um, for the last 10 or 11 years on, 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 on issues that impact the community and recently became um, a senator and has taken her um, campaigning skills to the, the Oireachtas. So welcome Eileen um, today. Um, we also have with us Mary uh, Brandley. Uh, Mary is the kids' own associated writer, and Mary has worked on uh, a number of different um, kids' own um, books um, that uh, reflect the views and um, um, you know, of, of the young traveller uh, community. And we finally, um, I think we've got Bernadette coming in. I'm going to let Bernadette join in a second. We've got Ed. Uh, before I come to Bernadette, we have Joe Holmwood, and Joe is the creative um, director with uh, Kids Own Publishing. So, um, Joe, you're welcome as well. And I'm just going to click. Um, I don't see, actually, no, I don't see Bernadette, apologies there. Um, so what I'll do is maybe, Joe, um, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you in a second, but just to encourage anyone who's watching, if you have questions or, or comments, you can um, put them in the box below and I, I'll see them and I can pass them on to the relevant um, person if, if that's okay. And I just want to acknowledge as well um, some of the, we invited all our local and uh, national uh, elected representatives to come along today in Sligo County Council and local TDs so a number of those have got back so I hope they're tuning in I just want to mention Marion Harkin and Thomas Healy, Marie Casterly and Declan Bree uh, who got back to us and sent good wishes for the launch so I hope they're watching and that they uh, enjoy the event so on that Joe I will 
hand over to you for the next um, part of the event. And um, I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll chip in again with some questions later on. But Joe, for now, it's over to you. Brilliant. Um, thanks so much, Jamie. And um, we're really delighted to be partnering with Sligo Traveller Support Group on, on this event. And thank you so much for, for hosting us um, on, your, on your Facebook page. Um, so I suppose just just and, and to thank everybody for coming to this to this launch. And we, we've already had such a fantastic response to to the republication of, of Can't Lose Can't. So it, it's it's very exciting. Um, as Jamie said, my name is Joe Homewood and I'm the, the, the creative director of Kids Own Publishing Partnership. And um, just to, to, to give a few brief words about Kids Own and our work. Um, we have been around since 1997 and based in Sligo, but working all over the country with uh, children and young people. And we are absolutely passionate about the intrinsic value of the arts in children's lives. So we are first and foremost a, a, an arts organisation and we really um, believe in giving children access to cultural experience, supporting children to be actively creating, inquiring, communicating and making meaning through the arts. And our ethos is rooted in, in very much in professional arts practice. So we produce professionally published books um, with a view to really elevating and giving visibility to children's voices and, and artwork. Um, and, and I suppose our name, as our name suggests, um, it, it's really about children having ownership over their own lives and experiences. Children are the experts in their own lives. So we are Ireland's only dedicated publisher of books by children and our books as um, predominantly non-fiction books really speak about children's own experiences um, and reflect the diversity of children's lives in Ireland today. So I suppose Kids Own also has a, a very strong social inclusion agenda and we have always sought to give a voice in particular to children who, whose voices are seldom heard and, and to children who perhaps experience social isolation or different forms of disadvantage. Um, so we have developed numerous projects and published numerous titles with uh, children from traveller communities and, and a lot of projects as well that have worked with children, traveller children and settled uh, children together. Um, so we have a really rich and unique resource of, of books, but Can't Lose Can't in particular has been such a popular title um, because of its profiling of the Kant language. Um, and uh, it, it actually went out of print very quickly because it, it, it was so popular. And for, for many years, we have been saying that we really want to, um, to reprint this book. So it is, it is really genuinely um, so exciting to have this opportunity um, to reprint the book and I suppose I, I must acknowledge the, um, the the funding that we received from the Arts Council, and that is what has made this possible. So it's it's really wonderful. Um, and um, so before we enter into a kind of a wider panel discussion, I'm going to um, hand over to Senator Eileen Flynn, and we're really delighted. We're delighted to have all the panelists here um, here today to to chat about a few different things in relation to this book and the wider kind of context. Um, thank you so much, and to Eileen Flynn for joining us and for officially launching this book. And as Jamie said, um, uh, you you have been appointed to the Senate since since June 2020, but also have been a, a, an activist um, for, for for 10 years or more and a community development worker. So I, I'd like to hand over to you and um, to, to officially launch. I can't lose count. Uh, thank you, uh, Joe, and uh, thanks to Sligo uh, Travellers and uh, Children uh, Ch uh, Kids Own's own publisher uh, in partnership uh, for inviting me today to to launch this book. As uh, and as a, a person who sits in the House of Deiroctus, uh, I'm, I'm absolutely privileged to to launch to, to be the person that launches uh, this book. Um, this morning I had a conversation on my own to Bardoon, who we all know is very, very passionate about uh, traveller language and about uh, traveller um, traveller uh, uh, language. But you know, a lot of our are uh, gammon, so I think it's important to use both. And can't lose can't is such an like the name alone 
speaks for itself of the book. And for me, this morning, having a conversation with Owen, I was like, oh, Owen, I don't think I can do this because I'm not fluent in our language, you know. I know basic words like uh, men, women, uh, fin, bjor, uh, sublic, lack, and all those kind of words. I know I was reared with them. And the reason for that was my grandfather, my big daddy, Lord Mercy Panem, would always say to us, don't uh, speak the language in school because the teachers would uh, try to rob our language. And what he meant by that was, you know, members of the settled community trying to take ownership of our um, of our language. So uh, older generation, from my experience, tried to keep the language within themselves and didn't want, like, say, when us going to primary school uh, to spread it and get it robbed by uh, members of the settled community. And today, although it's 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 a child's uh, book and it's a children's book, I think the title of the book, To Can't Lose Can't, is so important for us as, as a community of people to really value our language. And, and for me, even, try, uh, like, reflecting that, does um, our language mean to me as 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 a person and as a person that uh, that's a public speak, a speaker as well? You know, I think today is the beginning of something bigger for us as a community of people. I think uh, obviously we need more resource. We need more. Um, we we need firstly our education uh, bill across the line, our cultural and history bill, where not only the traveller community but people from uh, the general population and other ethnic minority groups will be able to learn about uh, indigenous uh, group of uh, people in Ireland, which is us, the traveller community, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, learn other people our language, which is Kant or um, or gammon within the uh, the curriculum system system. Unfortunately. Um, myself and Owen had a meeting on Minister uh, Foley in January and, you know, is trying to get uh, this uh, bill over the line. Uh, Senator Clek Callagher Lamut Owen de Bardoon has, um, the bill is already done up, it's already passed uh, one stage, it needs to pass this stage in, in the Dáil now and we need Minister Foley to, to, um, to champion this bill but unfortunately it doesn't look that way now so we'll continue to uh, trying to persuade uh, Minister uh, Foley to champion this bill and if she can't do so we can get other uh, TDs um, to champion the bill and see can we get it uh, over the line over the next few months. You know we are recognised as an ethnic minority group and that includes our language as an ethnic minority group. Uh, we need, you know, the government really needs to put their money where their mouth is and value us as a community of people and value our language so that young people can value their language, that young people won't have to grow up the way I grew up and not being fluent within my own language and feeling that shame and embarrassment because I wasn't fluent within me uh, with my own language, if you want. And it's just the same across the board, even with like many people in, in Ireland don't speak uh, Irish. And even in, in, in school, I was denied uh, to speak Irish, uh, like many members of the traveller community. So just to note that as well. But again, I just really hope today is a... Uh, is a starting point for our language to be celebrated, to be embraced and to be something that each and every one of us is proud of and that it is resourced, uh, as I said, as it is resourced from the from the government and from the state and that they value our language and invest in our language because us ourselves need to invest in our language and our young people uh, growing up, you know. I, I look forward to, to reading the book to Billy and when she starts school herself, I'd be encouraging her, please God, to speak our, our, our language, you know. So uh, without any further ado, it just gives me great pleasure to uh, to launch uh, the book uh, can't lose, can't, and and I think as as adults, uh, you know, we need to be very mindful of our language and be proud of it and speak it on a daily basis when we can. So I officially launched the book now, and thank you so so much. That that's great. Thank you, Eileen, for those um, great powerful words as always. Um, and to officially launch the book, uh, I'm going to go to Joe because I think Joe, you want to introduce Mary uh, before we go on to general uh, panel. Is that is that okay? Yeah, perfect. And um, I mean, there's so much in what you just said, Eileen, in those few minutes that I think 
really can stimulate so much discussion and so uh, it's going to be great now to get into a discussion about some of those things um, but I just want to hand over to Mary Brandley um, to I suppose just to start off by giving a bit of more context for the actual project that led to the publication of this book because Mary is a stalwart of kids zone and has been around for certainly for longer than I have um, in kids zone that is and um, so Mary would you like to say a little bit just about the context for the book and um, yeah. start us off First, firstly, I, I, I'm pure emotional, uh, Senator Flynn, from your fabulous uh, launch speech there. Um, it is a big day, and uh, I, I'm, I'm in, I, I feel I'm in fabulous company. It's great to say hello to Bernadette and to be meeting Anne-Marie and yourself for, for the first time, and hopefully, and, and Owen, of course. And we'd love to be going forward on, on a journey and taking uh, alongside the travellers in whatever way we can support uh artistically and with young people uh traveler culture and celebrate traveler culture celebrate the language uh and really be uh, really be supportive in broadcasting uh the the absolute uh you know the talent and the and the and the spirit uh of of the traveler people um i uh, i have i as joe said i'm a veteran i'm i'm 20 years with kids own this year and uh, still standing and and very proud to have been involved i came to kids own uh in 2001 because i had been working with the uh as a resource teacher with the traveling community in sligo and i had overheard a few traveler nursery rhymes and it's as you said that the that the traveller children didn't want to particularly share their culture or the or the language, but one child said to the other, "Charlie Barlish get three legs." Soldier's mother two duck eggs. One was rotten good for nothing. Charlie Barlish get three legs, and my ears pricked up because I had this was new nursery rhyme to me, and I I said, "Teresa, what what did you say?" Nothing said Teresa, quick as a, a shot, you know. <laughs> and I was like, come on, you said something, Charlie Barley. And so eventually we we were able to have these conversations. I was able to have the conversations with loads of traveller children and the traveller families because I went on to become a visiting teacher with the travelling community. So it gave me great access to visit the traveller families in the halting sites, in the houses, etc. And I was saying, you know what, I after hearing this Charlie Barley. You know, have you, are, there, are there more nursery rhymes? Are there more jokes? Are there traveler specific um, sayings that you have? And slowly but surely got this collection together, which became my firstborn with kids own, Charlie Barley and all his friends. And it was an incredible proud uh, moment for me. In fact, it was the most stunning and exhilarating thing that had happened to me in my entire life up to that point. But from Charlie Barley, we, we wrote an article that was published in the Equality News saying, we need more books like Charlie Barley. And Bernardo's came through and said, yes, we do. And gave us money. And we knew we were going to be in Finglas uh, at the start of a project uh, with Clotty Malotti and all her friends. That, that was the, the book that came out of that project. But on the steps of All Hallows, as a visiting teacher for travelers, my colleague, uh, Dr. Marion Brown said to me, Mary, what about the cant? you know it really would kids own take on a project and i said they certainly would i'll be chatting the bosses when i go home and let's see what we can do can what can you set up on the ground for us so marion brown went to breed at leeson in county kildare library service and the celt the leadership partnership there and they said absolutely we're gonna we're going to fund this so um tuesdays we were in finglas Wednesdays, we were in Newbridge uh, doing the workshops with uh, primary and secondary school children there, Travellers Unsettled, and we had decided it would be the art, the, the art would be the way that we would start learning the language together. And Marion's collection of Cantor, she was studying it for her PhD, was based on the collection of Park Magrena, but of course it had come from the Travellers in the 30s. Marion was bringing this uh, collection forward in the early 2000s so we had something to go on we had the traveling community as well to work with and hey presto um six months later uh can't lose can't uh was launched around this time of the year in 2003 
uh, in Newbridge Arts Centre uh, with, the, with the arts officer as well, Lucina. But a big thank you to, you know, that, that original team um, because, of course, that was, that was the, the origins. But I think, as Senator Flynn has said today, today is the day we take the next step forward. And I think that is enough out of me. Uh, thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank, thanks, Mary. Um, it's, it's such a long history uh, of publishing and, um, it, yeah, uh, very exciting. So, I, I mean, I suppose we want to kind of broaden it out into, into a, a bit of a wider discussion. And one of the questions we were interested in in asking, and, and we're so delighted to have Owen Devarge in here and Anna-Marie Collins as well, and I, I suppose um, working in an educational context um one of the things that that we were interested in in sort of exploring i suppose is what is the value of having books and resources in the classroom that that a include the child's voice and b give give better and more positive representation to to minority languages and cultures so i don't know who would like to speak to that first but um Anne-Marie or, or or owen perhaps <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm used to uh, I'm used to Zoom, so I was trying to unmute myself there. Um, yeah, so I suppose I'd be coming from the primary school perspective, so being in the primary school classroom. Um, and Joe, I know we'd been chatting yesterday about this, and um, for me, I just thought, you know, this this book would be great. It should really be in every classroom um, for children. Um, the book is great because it has it's uh, it's it's great it has english it has canton it has gaelge as well so you know it'd be great for gaelge schools to have a classroom on the shelf in every classroom generally there's a little library there for the children to sit down during the day you know during english um the stations and things there's, there's an opportunity there for them to go and sit and read and i just think it'd be great for a child to go up and see like regardless of whether you have travelers in your classroom or not it's it would be lovely to have that on your shelf for the child to go up and see like oh wow this is it if this is a language that um traveler children might speak um but also i think it's lovely that the three languages are there and i think it's it i don't know if owen agrees with this but this it's so much similarities between the guelga and the and Kant as well and that's lovely to see too um because there's a lot of young traveler children in Grail schools now as, as well as uh, speaking Irish. So I think it's it just it really should be in every in every school. Um, and it's also a great book that you can support like in like I know we don't. I know that the uh, like what Eileen was saying is that we really have to push for the uh, bill to be put forward and to get progress there with it. But there's so many opportunities in the current curriculum for us to use book like books like uh, this um, and books, Mary, as well. That one that you talked about is really interesting um, for teachers to have. Yeah, that's brilliant. Like storytelling, like I do storytelling um, throughout the week with the children. So they're just fantastic for us to we can I, I suppose the point I'm trying to make is um there's we we don't have to wait as well there's so many chances and opportunities for us to use these resources bring it into our classrooms and uh, share with the children and I think it's a great confidence boost for young traveler children to go up I always tell the story of when I was um uh, a training therapist I was out in I was training in palliative care and I remember being on uh, the ward and going up and seeing a book on the on the shelf. And it was like how to work with the traveling community in end of life care. And I thought that was so lovely that they acknowledged that it was a different culture that, um, you know, a funeral for travelers is a huge event. And it's something that needs to be just uh, it's a, it was it was a great book to guide the therapist and how you could work with them and support travelers. And I think we should see so, lots of that in schools, uh, you know, through our stories on the shelf. Um, and like Eileen, like what you were saying, it's great for your child as well to be able to read books like that and to learn their language and to share it with her friends as well when she's getting older. So, yeah, that's my take on it coming from the primary school perspective. Uh, I own, I don't know if you've anything to add to that. I, I would, I'd be very similar to yourself and to the echo of the words of kind of um, Senator Flynn and, and Mary and Joe. I think that the, we, we've established that very much there's a want, but also there's very much a need. Uh, children need to be able to see themselves, need to be able to hear themselves within the curriculum, they need to re identify and reaffirm their identities and the value of those identities. And what I especially liked is actually how the language is given the same focus as English and Irish within the book, 
which I think is very important because it's not that one's lacking a value and the other is a stranger to themselves. They're actually, they are kindred history, especially Irish. Um, like many of our words, we know the predate modern Irish, like Olami, it's actually, which means the darker night is actually found in own script. So our language in itself is also a gatekeeper and a trailer holder of an, a very ancient tradition that we haven't really had the opportunity to, to celebrate. And similar to what uh, Senator Flynn was saying, is that for a very long time, because of cultural appropriation and people feeling they're in a reduced way or they're very, very much under a systematic attack, the language was protected in a very different way. The people didn't want to share it because it became a tool of, of identity, it became a tool of um, resilience, but also became a tool of safety. And we are shifting in those spaces to be becoming a tool and I suppose a bleeding fire of celebration. Like there are more and more young people who want to share it, want to speak it, want to sing it, want to talk it, want to create new forms of it. And I think something that the book does is that it gives us the opportunity to share that a bit more, but also it highlights the lack of accessibility to some of the resources that we have. Um, the Arab, there's a lot of stuff out there um, on our language. Bamming can't usually record a shelter. It's either inaccessible, it's in, it's in um, academic archives. Um, even like Master Green's work, like Horace Greener, um, some of his stuff is amazing. Published in the 1930s, most people haven't even come across it because it's not accessible. So I think what this book actually is identifying is that one, the need is not, they, they are not just the ones. Um, there are resources that we don't have to wait around for. We can just create those pathways forward. But by all means, though, that when you take a language from people, you, you rob them of part of their soul. And what we're in the midst of is reclaiming people's identities and ability to celebrate who they truly are rather than who they're told they are. I think that this is about one of those important tools. Thanks, Owen. I, I, I was just going to jump in there. Like, I, I, I know that Eileen, you have to leave um, short. You've got another meeting um, taking place. Do you want to respond, Eileen, um, just before you might have to go to anything that's been said so far or yeah i i, I just think yeah, yeah. I, I think it's important as uh what Anne marie and owner saying you know like there is a libraries within all schools and within the classroom and you know if if we had this uh book within um all schools in ireland it's educational not only for traveler children but also for ch for uh, children again from all uh, different walks of life and it's uh, you know unless we know about communities we're going to spend our whole life fair in communities because we don't know and we've never like for many people they're prejudiced host our communities because they'd never met a member of the traveler community and never had the opportunity to learn about travelers except for what they hear in their local pub and in the gutter uh, media if you want so I, I, I think as, as Owen and, and Anne-Marie are saying is that you know young people want to own our, our language and, and, and you can see it more visible now even within schools and stuff that young, young people have more of an interest and uh, is not sparing from the language and it's about we know now and we accept we own that language can't our, our gammon and you know it should be celebrated and I think it's up to each individual teacher as Anne-Marie has said uh, rightly and to have the, uh, the book within every like the, this book within itself within every classroom within the uh, primary school system and, and secondary school and again adults can take an awful lot from the book too you know because it's, it's important that like we're never too old to I think we might have lost last year. Yeah, um, I think Eileen might be gone. She might join in, but just before I hand back to you, Joe, maybe for the next question, um, I might. I just want to acknowledge Bernadette Mahon there as well. I know she was having technical problems getting in the start, so welcome, Bernadette. Bernadette is the manager of the Sligo Travellers Support Group. And maybe, Bernadette, do you want to just give, I suppose, your reactions to what's been said so far on, on the launch of the book and maybe your own thoughts on why it's important um, if you just want to unmute yourself um, there. Thank you very much Jenny. First of all I want to thank each of you for being part of this with ourselves and Kids On and Mary Brandley you're a sight for sore eyes honey I haven't seen you in years really and truly lovely to see you I remember when those books were being developed and Mary was running around like a headless chicken trying to get all done, yes? But credit where credit is due, Mary. At that time, it wasn't really seen as, as a thing to do in Ireland. But thankfully, the wheel has turned and now it's, it's been accepted that these are things that is needed within in the classrooms. But also what is happening in one side of this is kids only and ourselves 
are looking to get a small pot of money or a large pot of money, whichever we get, to first of all, see the books that's been done and people to use them in the classroom was great. But there is still things that, that the, the educators, now whether they're travel educators or they're settled educators, they don't hear some things in the classroom because the children don't see them, don't hear, don't say them. And it's about no one are getting what is the uns what is the unspoken because a lot of children we're, we're looking in now coming out of the pandemic hopefully coming out of the pandemic and the mental health of, of ireland has de has deteriorated at a rate of knots and those living within a minority communities not just the traveling community are suffering a wee bit greater unfortunately they're suffering a wee bit greater so those children and, the, and coming from families where the voice is not strong it's to know when to sit down and talk to a person for what they're not actually saying because that is something that has to be captured in the classroom as well because a lot of it is missed a lot of it is missed right throughout the world but mary did mary brand you made me laugh with charlie barley i certainly love charlie Barley. <laughs> but the books need to be distributed yes and there needs to be further ones developed so mary i think you should work well into your aces in doing them right don't bother us hiring <laughs> thank you if, if I could respond to that, it would be my dream to never retire. You know, there are, there are certain breeds of people that never retire, like politicians <laughs> and, and writers and artists. We just keep going until somebody puts us out of our misery, maybe, when we're 120. I don't know. Like Porrick McGrain, bless him, who lived yes. to be 106. But I think because we're at the, we're at the opportune time now where, where the world is looking at the diverse, diverse communities, do you know, and it's about time that this has actually started to happen because I was doing this when my own children were very small. I now have four grandchildren that are going into school and I need them to be able to see that it's not OK to be denying who you are. You know, they have to be proud of who they are as people, whether they're travellers, whether they're whatever they are. People, young people have to be allowed to be proud of themselves because that what has caused an awful lot of mental health issues it with sexual orientation, with whatever community you're coming from. And you know, it's about time that we have to be like teach people to be proud of themselves. So inclusive in every aspect within the classrooms. Well, the traveler aspect has been withheld for a whole of a lifetime. So it's it's brilliant to see it happening now. And specifically, and I'm 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 being prejudiced here, right? When they're all coming from Sligo in the beginning. <laughs> I, I, I do note that uh, both Anne-Marie and Owen talked about the inclusion of Irish uh, yes. in, in the countries can't and that was absolutely deliberate because we yeah. did want to line up the, the languages that were in the country at the time. Yeah. Of course, yeah. now you could add Polish, you yeah. could add Urdu, you could have Arabic. And this is a reflection of the diversity of the of the art of any classroom in Ireland today. So that's we, very true, Mary. But but we're, we're looking at when when Ireland became more diverse, right? The classrooms then were bringing in the different languages, were being appropriate to all those different communities. But when the traveller community, going back to twenty years ago in my county, when they started going to this is my county of origin, Mayo, when they started going to secondary school, there was specific classes, and I'm ashamed to admit this, right? But there was specific Specific classes taken out in very large secondary schools and all the traveling children were put into the one class and the other children were running in the run of the mill classes that came in the tutors came in and ran the English the Irish the German whatever they were doing the maths and then when they had time they went over to the classroom and the children got maybe 10 minutes of this or 20 minutes of that and three hours of nothing and that went on until one or two mothers who I was one of them and the children in the classroom weren't mine but I felt as a traveller woman, I couldn't allow this to happen along with an aunt of mine who's now known as Branny Winnie all over Ireland, yes. But she went in with me and we actually had to try and pull that classroom apart and get those children included in the general run of the school and try and make the teachers be more, more appropriate to them rather than harden the children into a, into a corner like cattle in the rain in a corner of a field. You know, so thankfully we're at a stage where things are being included now. And it's, you know, the world could be our oyster if we work with everything and they work with us. But fair play to every one of you. I mean that genuinely, and especially Jamie. He's a godsend to me. <laughs> I think um, I'm really struck by what you said, Bernadette, about, you know, the the, the unspoken and um, what what's not said and and the you know the ability to recognize that which can be very difficult and i think you know it's worth 
you know, highlighting, I think, the value of the arts, particularly for kids zone, you know, that's very much um, where our work is rooted in, in an artistic process and creating a, a space and a safe space for children to feel that they can express themselves freely and, um, and have free a free artistic expression but i suppose it, it it also raises that question about adults you know because obviously this is a book created by children for children first and foremost but as Anne marie said it can have a a huge value for adults as well particularly working in an educational context so i suppose like maybe maybe we could talk a bit more to that owen or Anne marie would you like to talk a bit more to that and the, and the role that adults play as well in in this sort of changing our culture and changing perceptions I, I, I hope don't mind me jumping in there, Anne Marie. But I, I think yeah, I was going to say see, it, it, it's it's something that's, uh, that 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 is in process. And in fact, Sligo, or one of the people that were rolling out pre pandemic around, was actually setting up groups like the Tom Tarry. In fact, actually was one of the people who went to, to Sligo as they kind of travel around an intergenerational setting of people sharing the language. I love the the illusion of the people know few so few words. And, I, and my mother would say, get travel together and get the married ring. Every word can fetch. You know, there's this idea people aren't fluent and they're, they don't know what this means and that means. But give the people the space in the environment that we, are, like, we can blossom. And I think for any language to be uh, stabilised, to be promoted and to be ingrained within the cultural context of with belonging within the Irish framework, which of course it does, it has to have an intergenerational response. So it's not just supporting children to hold on to a language, celebrate it. It's also reminding and creating an environment where parents and grandparents and family members and uncles and aunts and cousins but share it and share it in an open setting rather than share it in under terms of kind of, of fear because i understand that back in 2011 there was a phd done and it was focusing on a center in ennis and it's a very interesting piece and i read the research but it was one of the recommendations and insights came back that people weren't actually speaking the language about the setting of there was travelers in a settled norm to environment and there was other people in positions of power they didn't want to be rude you know, talking in front of other people that had influence over their lives um, and how that was interpreted without the framework was that Travers didn't have a language or want to use it. In fact, they didn't want to be rude and they wanted to be considerate people around them. But also the environment in which the language was being shared was dominated and controlled by settled people. And we, we, we do tone class and we, we shift our languages in our spaces because we're in different spaces and we know we're not the ones that influence the power. So about looking at those and, and creating new systems and structures, because if you give people the space to to fill their world with their own words, they most certainly will do it. Especially if they're large rings. But you know, but I'm looking forward to that as well because standardization of the alphabet and also that's a different challenge. But I think we'll get there if we just give the people space to, to share as, as they care and have their own words heard. Yeah, and I, I just agree. Yeah, I just agree, just agree with what you said. That's yeah, you've just summed it up really nicely. And like I I'd be similar now enough to to Eileen in that um like I wouldn't I wouldn't speak any can't um I understand it my parents would speak it like all all day to themselves you know to and some of my brothers have it um I went to I went to a grail school when I was younger because very much like what Bernadette had said um none of my my mother and father never got to learn Irish so they were really interested in the Irish language and that's where I went because they were so fascinated by it so it'd be lovely to see that interest as well from other people in in you know taking that interest in the language that travelers have but um what was I going to say there yeah so I I, I think it's look I think um and, and very much what you'd said on as well you do that thing i noticed that as well even with my family you know if there's someone at the at the door of the postman is there and your father's talking away in can't and i'm going will you stop like the fella can't understand you so we do kind of hush it and go would you stop like they can't understand what you're saying or they're, you're in the shop or something so you do tend to um but it is out of just you just don't want to be rude um but people are very aware it's very interesting when i was in secondary school it was mad because um i I don't know if you'd agree, um, Bernard and known, but certainly like, you know, some parts in Munster, I remember living down in Cork for a while, but a lot of, you go down to Munster and they're using a lot of cant words and you'd be saying, you know, that's not, you know, that that's a traveler word. And, um, or even up here as well, when I was in secondary school, some of the girls in my class, like I remember one girl, she was, um, oh she, she was just in and she was using all this this cant language in the class and it was just it's fascinating and there were settled people so i think it's it's mad that a lot of adults don't actually know in ireland that they're actually using um the language of travelers i don't know if you'd agree with that if you've had that experience but certainly i would and i see it so much it's almost it's straight it's almost kind of cool like 
I, I hear it a lot in Dublin and oh, I found it down in Cork as well where they'd use it a lot and I'd always stop people and say you know that that's so yeah um so I think it is I do, I do think people are I do think people are interested in it um and just with teachers as well I think um see I I, I suppose I'm going because I am a teacher I I, I would say that the teachers I'm around are certainly interested in trying to um you know bring that language into the classroom i was in further ed as well for a while it's just it's like owen said often it's they don't know where to find it and it's uh you also don't want to do damage to the language by not pronouncing it correctly and you need something there to support them in, in sharing the language so i think it is about just developing that now going into the future starting from here and trying to add more so the teachers can access it um quickly and and share it in yeah in the classroom so that's my my take on it. I think that's very good, Anne Marie. I just we have a note in here from a, a very well known member of the traveling community in Ireland, T.J. Hogan, who lost his dear grandmother to the breakings of his heart. There's no point to say it wasn't, but she had dementia before she passed, and ironically, she spoke gammon for the latter part of her life because that's what she remembered. Isn't that quite mm -hmm. ironic? You know, but for, for while yes, the, the, the travel language needs to be taught and people need to be aware of it, and where our own community would be embarrassed, like like Anne Marie and Owen has said, when people will come in, you can't be doing that because the man or the woman doesn't understand it. Yes. But then equally what was used, and which is something that I would see as a traveling community, we're trying not to be rude, but some individuals from the wider population who think they had the Collins English dictionary for breakfast. When they have a traveling community person coming in, they'd start talking in elementary, my dear Watson, like so that you wouldn't have an understanding of what they were talking about. Or if you came from my part of the world where the Gaeltac was near hand, you'd have people who'd speak fluent Irish in front of a crowd of traveling people to stop them understanding what they were talking about. They could have been talking about them and calling them names. But I think that the diversity within Ireland now has to be respected right across, be it the Gaelic language, be it the Collins English Dictionary, or be it as a travelling community. You know, just basic manners and basic respect and having respect for all communities, not just the travelling community and the great Irish settled person, we call them, yeah? And, and to work with that. But I think there's an opportune time, really an opportune time for people to work together. And I leave that to Mary. Go on, Mary. Well, I, I, I'd love to take a point about um i suppose the monoculture the monocultural mindset the english only mindset being threatened by um people speaking other languages in 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 front of them and this isn't just an irish phenomenon it was also when i was teaching in boston it was it was a catholic school and there was an english only um uh yeah, I was going to say a fatwa, but that, that's not exactly right. There was an English only policy and there were Spanish speakers and Greek speakers and Chinese speakers and um, so many languages in the school. And I have, was developing, would you believe, Spanish um, books with kids and older kids were teaching younger children how to read in Spanish. Anyway, the, really, honestly, the powers that be were having a fit and they were saying, no, they, how will they, they need to improve their English. But really the thinking was they need to improve their language. All language benefits from just more language. So that, you know, children whose first language is not English, they need to develop that language. They need to develop their Kant, their Irish, their English, their German, their Polish, their Chinese or whatever it is. And small children could be multilingual, not a bother with no, with no you know, no, no problem. But so we did actually work on the principle to say, you know, we, we could have a multilingual school. The kids aren't saying horrible things about us in their languages behind our backs. Why don't we say, yes, you can talk, you can speak whatever you want on the classroom and, and on, the, on the yard. And actually at the final assembly, they, Sister Anne got up and she said, okay, we're going to say the Our Father and you can say, everybody can say it in their own language. Well, my God, I was belting out at the top of my voice because, of course, it's, a, you know, it's like freedom of speech, you know, freedom of, of expression. You know, these are important. It's just um, having the conversation and breaking down, you know, some kind of, oh, we're not comfortable with that. We don't understand what they're saying. So therefore, we can't have it. And that, you know, I just be inviting, you know, the whole the whole of the teaching community to leave the comfort zone 
and and to to enter into the unknown as we do in the arts i suppose that's the value of the arts is going into the unknown we don't know what will be the result we but we know it'll work that's enough out of me now but almost my final word, I promise my final word, is that, that 20 years ago when this book was done the first time, it was leading, if you want, because we had the English, the Irish and the travel language. And there's the road to follow. And fair play to the people who had the insight to do that at the time, although Irish government didn't allow it to go where it needed to be, but now it does. So let's follow it in whatever form it needs to happen to make it more progressive. And fair play to the people of Sligo who started this and everybody involved. Could, could I just ask a, a, a question there that I just mentioned as well? There's lots, there's loads and loads of nice comments coming in on the Facebook page. Um, there's too many to go through, but lots of praise for everyone here and, and how people are excited about the book and the importance of preserving your language. And, and but people can read them themselves after. But there was there was one specific question that um, people, someone asked about, is the book still available? And I'll just get the plug in now before the end as well, that it is available to buy on the on the kids own website um if you go to the shop section and we'll put the link up on our page and i'm sure kids own will as well yeah. um so there's lots and lots of really positive comments um coming in um i i just wanted to ask a question of myself of, of for i suppose for owen and Anne marie as well um is our how i eileen kind of made reference there earlier about maybe the 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 the, the, the educational bill wasn't progressing maybe as as quickly as would have been hoped um, and Amber, you made reference as well to the fact that you, you you believe that a lot of teachers are open to new ideas, new initiatives, and new ways of teaching and, and different topics to teach. Are have you any practical suggestions about about how you know I suppose you can create awareness of counter gammon within the wider um, community and, and promote it within the traveling community as well within within schools? Is is it through books like this, or are there any other practical things that people can be doing and lobbying for maybe in their local schools to try and um, push it out a bit more? Yeah, um, I might, will I start off Owen and then, yeah, so I, because I had created a resource there last year for this um, a teaching resource because uh, basically for that, because teachers were saying to me, not just teachers, but youth workers, um, lecturers, people that wanted to share um, just anything about the community, be it the language, be it the history, the culture in their classroom. And again, not just if they have, like it's not just when you have a traveler child in your classroom, it's just making it a norm that you have it in every classroom. It's not going, oh, that's a traveler child there, so I better um, maybe put a book in the shelf now to make sure I'm inclusive. It's not about that, it's having it in every classroom. It's about it being normal. It's just, it's not so, it doesn't have to mean that you spend a whole class going over the history of the traveling community. It's just including it in your, it's having little resources like this it's just, it can be like a little stepping stone to it um but it's also like i i created the resource for anyone because i know that like when you are like the, the teaching day it's it's very busy like it is i'm in it and it's it's there's a lot to cover like this the maths is english is are just so much subjects and they're also children and and you know you know yourself with children life happens with children so you're not just a child is not just walking into a classroom and sitting down doing uh work you know there's a lot that they're a person they're a human being and they come with so it, the, the school day is busy and teachers I made the resource so that they have quick access to information about the community. Books like this, there's a section, um, a child section for, and it lists like various children's books that they can use. So when they're doing their weekly or daily storytelling session, they can have a book about a traveler child in it. Um, there's lots of uh, research there as well for anyone, maybe a lecturer or a student. I've had so many young teachers now, which is brilliant, emailing me going, the resource is brilliant. I, I can write. I'm so interested in learning more. Um, thanks for, you know, so th there's a, been a great feedback from uh, young teachers out there now that just didn't have access prior to that to information. Um, because often what's happening, uh, the only information that's, you know, feed it up most of the time is on the media and it's negative things. So I just wanted to try and capture 
the work by travelers in this resource, the talent out there, the our artists, our musicians, the Furies, like artists like Leanne McDonough, she's an amazing artist. Can we use her in our art, like an art curriculum? If you're a teacher, you can use her um, for fine art as an artist, you know, because that's what you're supposed to do as a teacher. Um, there's just so many amazing travelers out there that you can bring into your music class, into your history class, whatever it might be. So that resource is there. I don't know, Joe, maybe we could tweet it or something after for anyone that wants to find it. But I really think it is just um, reaching out as well. I always say to people, if you are a teacher or a youth worker or whatever, find out your local traveller organisation because they're brilliant for helping you. Um, they can tell you about events like during Traveller Pride Week. They can link in with you. Often they have traveller culture um, training as well. So find out, like, you know, every, usually most towns have a traveller organisation and use them, like, you know, get wise and use them, link in with them. And the likes of like own and stuff like books written by traveller artists. That's what you want to be bringing into the classroom. So that's where I'll finish up and own I'll pass it over to you. No worries. Um, I do very much agree, but also I think we need to get kind of the realization that diversity is not is not what we're talking about like a unicorn. We're talking about a reality. And what we're and especially in terms of travelers, we're looking for the normalization of a very normal people in a system that is that's for years has demonized us. So when we're looking at the resources and we're looking at stuff, we also need to ensure that it is traveler led because the systematic racism is so ingrained that good people trying to do good work can actually be very damaging. Like one of my one of my favorite teachers in secondary school once told me, and she was an amazing teacher, still is, once told me because she believed to be true, the Travers came from the Cornwallian times. Because that is what she actually knew. So so it, her 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 sense of narrative around the traveling people was they were failed settled people, not knowing and not having better information. So not only is there to ensure that children and people have access to information, but also the educators, that they are appropriately trained, that they're checking for their biases, that they have the correct information, that it's updated quite regularly that they've created a concurrent and ongoing relationship with the community and with the support groups and with the networks. You know, as our own narratives and understandings develop, they need to do as well. But also like the difference, like the, the legislation, it's very, very important, but that takes time. What we need to do is always check and going, when people are using Irish in spaces, why are they not also using Gammon Kent? Because it is a form of Irish. It's, it's, it's an indigenous language to the community. And it, so we need to start looking at those going, is it because people don't have the resources or is it because we as a community are undervalued? So it's about us being aware of those kind of dynamics, allowing ourselves to be challenged, allowing ourselves to fail at times, because we're going to, but at the same time, ensuring that, that it has to be travel led, because if it's not travel led, we're going to fall back into the second stage, your old structure of being rescued charity model, rather than a community that just wants its, its own liberation, its own freedom, its own voice return to itself. Yeah, uh, thanks, Owen. And I think just just to sort of um, chime in with what Jamie was saying, um, I was very struck by um, Senator Eileen Quinn's comments as well. Um, you know that um, obviously we've been aware of the travel, the, the education bill, and um, it being on the table. And I was a bit shocked there to hear her say that it maybe isn't being <coughs> isn't being championed by the minister in the in the way that she had hoped and that you had hoped. Um, maybe you could just talk a bit more to the bill itself and, and what it would hope to achieve, you know, what is the vision for the bill and, you know, hopefully that it will go forward, but just a little bit about that, you know, what, what, it, what it can achieve in, in education. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the bill itself is actually a very simplistic tool um, in order to engage the fact that we, we're not looking for anything different. We're only actually looking for the history and culture of the Irish people to be accurately portrayed and not in a set normative manner. So in, in 2017 and 2018, the NCCA did a review of the senior and junior cycle, and it came back and said that there was nowhere actually in the junior and senior cycle was there anything to do with travellers. And there was a notion of creating a traveller module um, within the curriculum. And we actually found this very problematic, because that comes the traveller hour or the traveller section, when in fact travellers are a part of our society. We, we were involved in the wars, involved in the Nigerian rising, we were involved in the economic kind of development of the country, involved in like wayfaring, trade, everything. Like we are a part of the community. So that's actually where it's passing at the moment. And there is some concerns on two grounds that are coming from the, the minister at the moment. One is that the minister doesn't want to directly um, direct, as far as I know, um, the workings of the NCA. But then they're going, if it's not the minister, then who? And then there's also there's a sense of fear that it would open this doorway to all sorts of diversity. That all suddenly we'll have to talk about Polish people and we'll have to talk about, you know, people from Russia. You can go, why is that a problem? That's an amazing gift, you know? And, and I think, uh, although I understand where some of those complications come, especially teachers who might be absolutely overrun with the kind of demand needs, 
like the Irish context for Travis was slightly different. We were actively removed from our evidences. Like we were removed, we were denigrated, or we were, mar- were as well as um, monetized and, and mimicized in our spaces. So uh, what the bid and the bid is going forward, and we, we were looking at people that the champions in the doll settings, and that is progressing one way or other. We are going to progress that. And the NCA, NCCA are adapting stuff like Dr. Hannah McGinley is currently working on those resources in order to, for it to become part of the curriculum. But it's not something that's going to change over, overnight. And we never promise it to see a panacea of remedies for all the racism and discrimination and these issues, because that's what travelers are known for. We're not known for our culture. We're not known for our history. We're not all known for any of our beautiful stuff. We're known for our crises and the mental health stats and our accommodation and the, and the negativity the around the media. We're not actually known as a people. So I think that it will take time. But the only way that works is that people keep having the expectation of acting for another table. Why isn't it being shared? Why are people being actively um, disassociated from spaces? But also taking the responsibility onto ourselves. This is not something someone else is going to do. This is something that everybody in this room and everyone who's listening to us, everybody else is listening to them, actually comes a part of it. Because if we're all waiting for someone else to do it, it never gets done. So we do have an opportunity, but it's one that we think that we can't get past. So even in 2018, under the UNESCO, our language about record is part of the, the UNESCO list of intangible cultural, uh, which means it's recognized in Europe. Our Taoiseach and the Kenny spoke in 2017, the 1st of March. It's recognized, it's not resourced in any way, shape, or form. But even the publication of this, and I'm very thankful to the Arts Council, uh, in terms of how language and Irish resource for the country, it's great things. And we need to start looking at this language as something that's equal and it's just as beautiful and complex and strange and, and engrossing as Gaelgan and all of the dialects. And to start realizing that we're not the lesser cousin or kin, we are, we're actually the same people, just our roles have been slightly different. And until we actually start moving those narratives forward, we'll always feel like we're a sight behind. But things like this and tools like this and spaces like this and conversations that we're having, it needs to continue, not just for events, but into our actual lives. Yeah, I, I was just going to pick up on something there as well. Like, oh, what you mentioned was just about, I suppose, the, the difference in experiences of the, the traveling community, maybe compared to other communities, and the, maybe the, the, the some of the lack of failure to, to push on this bill in the way that people would like. And it, it just seems to be that, I suppose, it's, that's a, a generational and a systemic negative attitudes or lack, lack of acceptance of what the community is and who the community is and, and what the community has done for generations. And I just remember it was a, it was about a few weeks ago when um, it was just a piece on the radio. Uh, they were talking about the Australian embassy flying the Aboriginal flag um, at the embassy in Dublin. And it was the first Australian embassy to do that across the world. And the, the presenter on radio was rightly praising this and it was a very positive step forward. And, but there was no real sense or acknowledgement that you know, the Ireland has its own indigenous population that it's discriminated against and marginalised for for generations and generations. Yet they were kind of backslapping uh, another country. You know, I, it was just this lack of of, of awareness, realisation about what's taking place and has taken place in 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 Ireland. Um, but yet praising another country for trying to move forward um, in how they recognise their indigenous people. It's, that's not really a question, it's just kind of a statement, but... Uh... Very well said, Jerry. Okay. Yeah, I, guess, uh, I think... Um, I don't think there's a bit of feedback, is there? But I think as well, I, I'm not sure if it was the same. I think it was New Zealand that actually did um, include, did go ahead and include the um, history of the um, their Indigenous people in the curriculum. Um, I don't know if I'm right in saying, I could swear it was, it was no, them. It was, New Zealand yeah. has done this, the Sami people, it's, it's nowhere a bit, and what it is, but it, again, it's nothing, it's nothing additional. It's just more authentic and truthful. So, you know, in fact, we're just like clearing up the, the exclusion, some of the exclusions, because Ireland still doesn't recognise all of its children. But um, like in, within the historical context and culture, that we've always been here, we've always existed, and we just that, want that accurately and honestly portrayed rather than excluded. It's not even, it's not, like, it's not an unmountable ask. It's literally just saying, we want a truthful story to be told. So, and the fact that that is so politicised shows how politicised Travers have become in that kind of uh, kickball action on the... On the I suppose on the, the platform of his life, but I think that it's it's not always in the great swooping acts 
that things change around the small acts of practicalities and engageability, like Anne Marie's resources, like the book, like Canting with Cauley, with William Cauley, things that we can actually know that we can build in and embrace people, but as long as it continues. Otherwise, like we, we are like doing the long way of like we're mentioned to a beautiful language that needs to survive because it's people who are certainly not going away. Yeah. And I just I just want to add one last thing as well that I think is important. It is important that we are like the, the program, even me getting into primary school teacher teaching was a program. Um, it's 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 uh, with Marino Institute of Education and they are supporting anyone from the traveling community to go into primary teaching and um, now I know um, Maynooth and other universities are doing kind of similar things so these are important too because you want that support like um, as Bernadette was saying and Eileen and a lot of people have touched on there's a lot of travelers out there just even to become a primary school teacher teacher you do have to have <coughs> quite a high standard of Irish and your maths has to be great and for a lot of them a lot of travelers maybe they'd never got to sit in an Irish class or um, got the support there for maths so uh, these programs as well to support uh, people from you know these backgrounds into teaching is important because we want them at the front of the classroom and I think having them at the front of the classroom is how you make these kind of meetings here with us interested in pushing mm -hmm. these things and getting them into schools and you want to know that if anything that's going into a school like if it's going in and if it's about travelers you want to know that there's people in those schools on the department of education in the ncca that are from that background and are able to offer their voice so just to kind of add that these, these initiatives are important so just um you know sorry i don't need to cut across you but i'd just like to say i, for, I forgot to say that sligo travelers uh, have coordinated with nuig and um, we have a pilot program with St. Angeles at this minute, with, you know, St. Angeles, an access program where three you know, three traveling people will be taken in and that there's, a, there's a potential grant as well for them doing this to get them onto different programs that they want to go on and further their education. And I suppose maybe it's me wearing the, the, the badge of honor for the traveling community. And this I can say that in the West of Ireland, in, in Mayo specifically, we have a number of traveling young women who are teachers. And it's a very proud day to be able to say that among such learned people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But this island just, program, just, contact us, anybody who wants to get on it, no problem. And there's the last thing I was struck there, Thomas, I, I know that uh, Mary says about to come in, is I think we need to have more joined up thinking as well. There's a lot of support for people in the education system around the younger engagement. And on third level, vast majority of travelers drop out at second level and there's very little actual support. Now there's localised support for organisations that are coming together and trying to throw those platforms, but there's a huge gap there. And one of those gaps actually is youth reach. Now I'm be part of, I'm partly structured by and supported by an ECD structure myself. Um, but we know the progression rates from, each, from the youth reaches are quite low to third level. That can be for a lot of reasons, like social economics and everything. But the vast majority of travellers do tend to go there, not only for the monetary need, if you're from if you're from a poverty background of poverty, you will go to where the place of resources. But also the higher population of travelers in those structures and being around your kin is quite an informers of like culturally enterprising things. But I, I I am so delightful of all the area interventions, the access programs and like um from the NYG to Marino, they're very important. But we also need to make sure that people in the the, the senior cycles don't lose out because unfortunately that's where we're losing most people. Well, oh, and I'd, I'd have to agree with that. And there has been a chronic underinvestment in traveler education uh, that is historic. That's definitely 20 years. That, did, that just didn't happen in 2008. There was a little bit of catch up in those early years. But by my goodness, did the Department of Education uh, take a massive swipe at so many supports that were there for the traveling community in 2008, 9, 10 and 11 and on board SNP snipped everything it wasn't just education it was health it was accommodation it was across the board like there was massive wipeout of supports for travelers at that time which has hardly come back hardly hardly a, an inch of that has come back and um, in 10 years and for shame right um uh, and what i'd also like to say it's testament to this incredible resilience within travelers some travelers who have been able to take the few opportunities and actually run with them. And so, you know, like uh, uh, that the, the fact that there's only 1% of travelers going on to third level, you know, is, uh, it's, you know, it's a terrible statistic. However, look at those individuals that do make it and to say to them, well, my God, you are so incredible in doing that, you know, 
um, because 20 years ago, of course, there, were, there wasn't even the 1% going on to third level. And in my own area, this was 20 years ago and more, there were very few travelers, you know, going into second level. So all of that has changed. Everybody, certainly everybody transfers now to secondary school. Um, but you own, oh, you're right, they don't stay in for the, for the senior cycle. They, they maybe make it as far as junior cert or 16 and say, I've had enough of this. Because of course, it's not meeting their needs at so many levels. Yes, Mary, and uh, just, you know, I think what you were saying about, you know, role models, positive role models. And uh, I, I think Anne-Marie mentioned Leanne McDonough there and, you know, uh, it just brought to mind the, the project that we did there in Balana with this giant tent, which is another publication um, that we produced in 2019, I think. Right. Um, and Leanne uh, came in on that project to talk to the children and they were so inspired by her, so incredibly inspired. Um, and just just from uh, the simple fact of her talking about, you know, um, uh, working towards becoming an artist and, um, you know, the reaction from the children was just, you know, they were just astounded really. And uh, I think it just really highlights the value of positive role models. Um, you know, so, uh, and I think, um, you know, what, what what you were saying though, that, that the statistics highlight how, you know, how far there is still to go, but that there have been some positive steps. And I suppose what I'm interested in hearing is, you know, m maybe where do we go from here or how, what would people like to see, you know, um, I suppose we've talked a lot about the macro picture, but in terms of sort of, you know, and, and Owen, you mentioned joined up thinking, you know, what, what is the value of interagency approaches? I suppose that was one question, um, you know, joint, joint forces, I think really, what, you know, I'd be interested to, to hear about that. From anyone. <laughs> There's never no harm in joined up forces because people talking together and working together, but one doesn't have, the other will find. Yes, and that's what, what travellers will believe themselves. And that's one for market trading kind of thing. If you haven't got it, you get it somewhere else. And if there's something that people are trying to do to promote positivity and further progression by talking to one another and working together, we will get it done in a way that is suitable to everybody. And, okay, we may not get 100%, but as sure as mother, we'll get more than 85 anyway. To, and that's what we're, to, you're aiming for. You're aiming to improve the whole time. Like the vaccination process is not going to get 100% straight away either. So like, we give us a wee bit of credit, a wee bit of slack. If we get so far, we can only improve. But there is a lot of stuff. But just when you're talking about artists, we say because we're doing a lot of stuff online, I would know two in particular young women, not just because they're women, but two particular young women who are absolutely fantastic artists, as in for drawing, because I know there's different ways. And if we were doing something that needed illustrations, why not have them hand drawn by traveling people? You know, like use that and, and, and show that because there is there is a market out there for it. And why not show that that, that is something that people can do? It's like the music and like doing all the different things. Mm -hmm. Like the words is one thing, the music is another. Then you have the language and then you have the art itself in whatever form it comes. And celebrating traveling people within that. And, and no matter what age they are, from cradle to the grave, if we can celebrate that and use it while trying to get the education materials within and every classroom in Ireland, we'd be doing a mighty bit of work. We would have, I tell you what, we could retire happy. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And like I just want to add, it is... Like it is really powerful going into a classroom. I know I keep coming back to the classroom and children and things, but just from seeing it myself, children really love coming into the classroom and pointing at pictures and going, there's my picture. Like I, I we were told about it when we were doing training, like I'm telling, get the children's pictures up on the wall. They're fast and they really are fascinated. They're like, did you see my picture up there? You want to be sharing that. I, for my, my, my art junior cert, I did my whole project, junior cert project on wagons and traveler culture. And that's up in our house and all over the house. You know, it's something that my parents are proud of. Um, but that was shown in the school as well. So it is just, it's not making a big deal about it either, but children love to see their work and their culture 
culture and their upbringing and everything on the walls. And it's not just pointing it out and going, oh my God, this is traveler stuff or anything. It's just simple things. It's acknowledgement. It's when you're coming in, when you see the, you know, G-Grit or hello on the wall, it's also putting up other languages. It's using Kant. It's having those little speech bubbles on the wall. It's the simplest things. It's having the books on the library shelves. It's bringing up those little words when we're learning learning about different languages. It's talking about in our, in your geography or whatever it is, it's talking about different homes, the different homes we live in in Ireland. It's living in, uh, you know, caravans. It's living in houses. And why, do, you know, it's, it's you, there's just so many ways that you can bring it in without making, it's not going to add a, a lot of extra work. It's just the simplest things often that you can do. And really children notice it and they love it. And it's not pointing out the traveler child or anything. It's just acknowledging it. And they can really, children really notice that and they take, and it's such a confidence boost. Certainly was for me anyway. But um, yeah, so that's all. That's what I add to it. Sorry, just, just to mention on traveller parents, now I know a lot of traveller parents going back in years would say, well, travelling children won't get to the schools and travelling children won't get to secondary school and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I was a mother of, of teenagers when I got my degree. And when I brought in my photographs of myself in my attire, having my photo that, when I had that photograph to my father, the light and door you have at home, he was so, so, so proud. And he says to me, Brandon, we have a lot of things. He said, and I love all my family. But you're the only one. He said, they got that. So you put that in a specific water crystal frame and put it up on the shelf. You know. Fantastic, um, Bernadette. Um, I, I just wanted to say that this is, and I'm conscious of the time now, and there might be questions coming in on the Facebook. Um, this is quite an unusual launch for us, actually, because just when you were saying, Anne-Marie, about um, you know children loving to see their work, and, and usually when we launch a book, um, you know, there are children at the launch because the children have created the book. And um, it's 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 just it's one of the most exciting parts of the project um, because they finally get to see their work in print. And that that's such an important part of the whole process is coming back, you know, however long afterwards and to actually have in their hands a, pu a publication that they have created themselves and that is voiced by them and that has their artwork in it. Um, so that's hugely important for us. And you know, obviously, because this is a reprint from a project that happened 18 years ago, we don't have children at this launch. And so it's, it's a very different type of event. But it might be just worth saying now, just in case anybody's listening who did participate in the original um, project or knows anybody who, who participated in the original project, we'd love you know, we would love to hear from those people, um, you know, all these years later and to and to sort of hear retrospectively about their their experience of, of the project all these all these years later. Um, and and also just to point out, I suppose, Jamie, that you very kindly gave it a, a bit a bit of a plug in the sense that it is available to, to buy from the Kids Own website. But also that we, because of a, a, a bit of discretionary funding that we have there, that we are, you know, we are in a position to post it out as well to people who request it for a limited, you know, for a limited period of time. We we can give give copies away, and so obviously we want as many people to get copies as you know as we can. So just to just to say that, I suppose, to anyone who's listening. Um, so. I and to know. save me having to answer about a thousand questions later on, <laughs> Charlie Barley is going to be re re reprinted again next year as well, so you can get a copy of that as well, okay? <laughs> yes, I and... Mary's the best um, salesperson I think kids own could have there. She's been flashing <laughs> pictures the whole time through. She's very organised. I, um, I'm like the magician's assistant who, you know, here's the hat, here's the rabbit. <laughs> no, Mary, there's a bit of a tinker and it's like been at the market stall here. <laughs> Bernadette, listen, what um I, I it's great to be in in this fabulous company. I, I never considered myself settled. I I always said I was housed more more than more than settled, and, and that continues to to be to be the way. And um, you know, I, I wonder, Jamie, are there any uh, comments and things that we need to address from from yeah. across the world? Yeah, well there's see there's there's so many comments coming in from um, there's people from Scotland, um, across Ireland as well. Um, just lots and lots of comments, just praising the book. A few people asking where it was available. 
uh, and also looking for your resource, Anne Marie. And thankfully, the Kids Zone have put in both the um, your resource, Anne Marie, and the link to the book as well. So that was the last questionnaire from Amy Ward as well. Uh, or yeah, so Amy, it is available there. We'll post it up on our our page again as a standalone post for anyone who wants to directly get it to both Amory's and the, the kids' own um, connection. But look, look, there was just one comment, I suppose, I, 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 and I was just, it was feeding into a question that I was just going to put towards, I suppose, primarily uh, Amory own and, and Bernadette um, was from um, Karen Byrne had just mentioned that in relation to the curriculum, that it's really not much to ask that our curriculum is full and factual and that the minister is dragging her feet isn't, isn't good. <laughs> Um, and I suppose that's, I was just going to ask a question about, do you feel, are you optimistic about things changing? And I know, Amory, you, 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 you mentioned a level of optimism about the responses of teachers in, in, the, that you deal with. And, uh, but are, are you optimistic on a, on a wider level that things can change um, in relation to how the tribal community is represented within the education sector? Uh, and, and wider society in general, and um, going by the fact, I suppose that you know, we that there was the the recognition of of, of ethnicity, um, but maybe not a huge amount has changed since then, and maybe the fact that the the, the educational bill that people maybe are a bit not too happy that Minister Foley isn't doing it the way maybe people hoped she would. Are there other reasons to be optimistic though? Are, are, are you optimistic? I'm sorry, that's a very long-winded question, but anyway, I'll leave it to um, Owen or Bernadette or anne if they want to come in on that. Yeah, see, I, I mean, I can only, I, I would say I am because I feel, I mean, it's, I feel it's great to be at the front of the classroom. I mean, that's that's my optimism that I have that um, chance that, uh, I mean, it's a very impactful position like to be at the front in that classroom. And um, so, yeah, I feel hopeful in that way. And I know so many other uh women and boys that are going in now to teaching from a traveler background so yeah I'm optimistic in that like by the end of this year I know four or five uh, young people from the traveling community that are going out to be teachers and hopefully more and more but every year um, so and that's what you want and I also see them getting involved in things like this these discussions or developing resources or making podcasts so I think there is movement and um, it is slow but like it is like you know, there is only about what 1% going on into these courses. So at the same, it kind of is not understandable, but it's, uh, I under, I can understand why it's, it's, it's just been, it's taken so long, like, um, but we have to keep on it and we have to keep using these people and, and hosting these events and making these resources and getting our voice out there and keep at it and not to lose hope because that's important. I think if you get swept away in that negativity, you don't, you're, you know, you, you just get lost in it. So yeah, I suppose I will be a bit hopeful. Don't get me wrong now, there is a lot that we need to change. And there's teachers out there, I've met many a teacher that um, is not very open to uh, students from different backgrounds or um, from disadvantaged areas or whatever it might be. Um, I've heard, I've been, I've, I've seen that I'm not in denial of that, definitely not, but um, I, it's also lovely to see that there are so many teachers contacting me or even, yeah, about the resource and wanting to share things. So I am optimistic in that way, yeah. That's my, my bit. I'm going to jump in now, Bernadette, because you didn't. <laughs> um, I am I'm incredibly optimistic. My life is filled with powerful, powerful people who are making changes on many, many levels. And that's only about growing and growing and developing. And, and even when we talk about the, the minister, um, like people are a little bit disappointed to think they're moving, but the door has never been shut because you can't shut the door on the, on, the, on the positive progression education of children. And I do think that in the end of the day, like density and sensibility and the, the, the human justice will be made. It's only a matter of time and it's finding their, their shared language and platforms of understanding. But yeah, I am incredibly optimistic. And I suppose that, that travelers are prospering. And there's challenges, no doubt, but travelers are prospering in so many areas, not just in education, but across the scope. And I think that we, we need to celebrate that far more, not just on the, the eves and times of travel celebration weeks and stuff, but in our day-to-day -day lives, because I'm not, no, I'm not sure about everybody else, but my life is filled with incredibly powerful change-making people. Well, long may that continue for you on. Long may that continue. But like that, I'm, I'm surrounded with a great team. I absolutely have to say I'm very delighted with the team that I work with and the family of origin and the management as well. But the family of origin I come from would be 
very much get up and get on with it and make things, try and improve things on a daily basis, even when tragic things happen. But as Jamie would be aware, I'm not going to go into it, something very soul destroying happened here in SDSG or happened to SDSG early this year. And only last night, believe it or not, you'd imagine she knew and she didn't know what was coming on this. My daughter says to me, Mother, she said, the goodness and the, the goodness is pulled out of you, she said. And you just seem to have lost the gist and the lips, she said, to move things forward. Well, it's as simple as this, she said. If you want to get on, you want to die in misery, you want to become bitter, you can do that. But other than that, get up and get on with it and turn your frown upside down and move forward. I thought it was class. Did I give you the you know, move? Get out of your rush and try and move forward. Because if, if the people who are seen to be strong, who are seen to be leaders, or seen to be activists, get stuck in a rush. What chance have others who are looking to us for support, who are looking for us to get those things into the schools, to talk to the departments, be it education, health, environment, whatever it is, what chance have they, if their voice is silenced and ours who are seen to be strong, are crippled and pulled out of us? So we just have to learn to park stuff a wee bit more, be a little bit more psychological. But anyway, thank you. There's, there, there's another... Um... Thanks, Bert. The question coming in as well. It's um, just to mention as well, actually, before that, there's a few more people come in who said they're listing where they're listening from. Uh, and there's someone in Manchester, Glasgow, uh, New York, New York as well. So we're we're transatlantic now, which is great, which is great. Uh, but just there's a comment there from TJ Hogan. And he just said, I, and again, this is open to anyone who wants to comment on it. And uh, he said the lack of recognition around our culture is a huge part of the high suicide rates travellers are being um, displayed as different however don't practice our language and customs this needs to start where it began with or in the in the community and, and in the family so i think the general point about the, the lack of recognition on culture um contributing to suicide rates um i don't does anyone want to to come in on come in on that I'll come in if nobody answers. It's uh, the lack of recognition is one thing. The lack of respect is another. And I think both are intertwined and it is there that the problem lies. And while there's the, 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 ah, I'm stuck. The lack of recognition of the traveling community, even though we have ethnic status in Ireland, the lack of recognition and the lack of, of respect for the traveling community is what where we, we in the 1st of March, when we got the recognition, it actually created more problems than it did further things it's like when the equal status act was enacted all those years ago so we all thought it was a magic wand and the whole world was going to change it did yeah surely they hid things more in between the lines then and found ways around it so it's it's about it's not about being being aggressive it's about being assertive and people being more assertive in saying what they have to say in in the most diplomatic way possible but being assertive because if we keep going round in circles See, I, I firmly believe the traveling people, the majority of traveling people, not all, but the majority of traveling people are direct. And that is seen as being aggressive and it's been used to, as a put down on the traveling community. So if I go into a meeting in, in different parts of the world or different parts of Ireland, oh, she's here again, she's going to be pushy. But it's actually, it's that's an assertive, it's the way we brought up because we have to fight to get into the classroom. We have to fight to get into the door office. We have to fight to get into a medical appointment sometimes. And, and there's things that you have to do. And if, if like, if I'm a member of the traveling community and I am not articulate and, and somebody is using the Collins English Dictionary against me, I'm going to go out that door, my head between my two legs, ashamed of my life, and will not go back in again for whatever it is that the person I'm looking for, for be myself or somebody else, because I'll be ashamed that I'll be humiliated yet again. So we have to be recognized for where we're at, and this is where the research that we're hoping to do with Kids Zone is about what is not said, picking up on what's not said, because that is absolutely crucial. And while the, the young people who did this book all those years ago, they're all young adults now and young mothers and fathers, and they will be dying to see this book, and I'm sure they'll have loads of calls from them. But if we're looking, while usually at a kids launch of a kids book, you have children, as Joe said earlier, but they're now young adults, they're all watching this, but they don't want what happened to them. Like, I don't want what happened to me to happen to my grandchildren. And we have to be strong enough to stay assertive. Like my daughter says to me last night, Mommy, you're in a hole. Get mother out of it. 
you know, because you have to move forward. Otherwise, your mental health deteriorates an awful lot worse. And she heard what I wasn't saying. So why can't we here in the classroom, if we're educators, or in, in community projects where we're educators, where there's health people and they're educators, and more than the local authorities, if they're not hearing what's said, like we send somebody down, and this is relevant, if we send somebody down to the local authority that's homeless and they have mental health issues, they have to go through 15 different hoops and nearly go up, well, not nearly, but actually go up and get a mental health service person to say that they can't be on their own because they have suicidal ideation before they're actually given somewhere to go. Like, that's absolutely ridiculous. In, in this day and age, that's ridiculous. So if you have health people who can't, travel people who go in who may not be literate, who may not be numerous things, who may be suffering, the younger people, and, I, and, and this is not labelling the younger people, but the majority of, okay, say 10% of the travelling community and maybe 20% of Ireland in general, there's, there's more mental health issues now than there was. More, more seen mental health issues than what there was 12 months ago. But we say 45% of the traveling community, and, and I'm sure the rest of the community as well, all over Ireland, suffers with anxiety at different levels. And that has deteriorated at a rate of nuts. So yeah. the people yeah. who suffer with anxiety, no more than all the, bringing in all the other uh, social determinants, you're saying that they're not able, I'm saying, not you, I'm saying that they're not able, they haven't the voice to speak for what it is that they want. So when you tell me if they went into a classroom, do you think any book has given them any bother? All they want to be done is left alone because their children feel the exact same way because if mommy and daddy is not willing to say it, they're not willing to say it because if monkey don't see, monkey can't do. That's right. So you have to have somebody that's strong enough but yet empathetic enough to be able to work with individuals and work with it right across the board. So like those, the book is Irish, English and Kent. How can't we have happiness, sadness and in between? How can we have support and, and, okay, things we can't do? If there's things I can't do as a support worker, then I have to be able to give a person a pathway that they can find it and help them to get there. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Like, that's what education is about, isn't it? Education is, is knowledge, and knowledge is power. It gets you all over the world. Like. Yeah. <laughs> so not hearing, hearing what people are not saying is key, I think. Yes, in, in a lot of stuff now going forward for anxiety and i'm going to shut up this time i promise <laughs> yeah i i think there's 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 so much truth there bernadette uh, in what you've spoken and owen and Anne marie um and and i i i really i know from joe as well and from all the kids on team we are a hundred percent committed to being alongside the, the, the traveling uh, young people and children and adults and anybody in in order to be the the support to broadcast that's our skills you 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 guys have you know know what you want to say we would love to be a vehicle for uh having your voices heard that was always that 20 years ago that's what kids own was about and in the current day that is still what kids own is about uh, children's voices young people's voices being heard listening and hearing and sending it out to the wider world absolutely and it, you know in in some ways it might it might seem only a small a small step but i think that it comes back to that positive representation you know and that there are books you know there are books there that do give a really positive representation and that's what we're all about it's really about celebrating and and um championing i suppose the culture and the language you know for traveler children but and uh, as mary has said extensively you know for, for children of all backgrounds as well but i think that that is such an important thing that there are um that there are positive representations you know for children to see themselves represented positively and and like i say it seems a small step but it, it you know it, it the value of that can be um can't be underestimated i think um do do um joe do we do we want to maybe just go around the, the fight for the final thoughts of the panel i, I just just after half five yeah. now i think and if you want to maybe then at the end just let people know again where the book can be got and and um where people can get a hold of it if that if that's if that's okay really yeah Absolutely. Parting words, anybody, I suppose. Parting words. Anne-Marie. 
Um, yeah, just going back to why we're here. So with the book, um, I mean, I'd love, I think it'd be great to see pr uh, primary school teachers using it in, in, in the classroom. I, I mean, this Twitter there, let's let's share it if you are one of those. Let's, let's how are you doing it? Give us ideas. Um, you know, we all love to, to share ideas. And um, yeah, so if you are, you know, it would be great. I think ha get it in your in your classroom, have it on, on the library bookshelf and um, and just encourage, yeah, use it. I, I would say that that's the most important thing. And that's I'm glad I'm just delighted that the book is being um, re relaunched and um, <coughs> I will definitely be having it in my classroom. So, yeah, that's my final words for today. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Owen? Um, mine would be a very similar to Anne-Marie, but also just a, a real encouragement for people to use as much of the language they can. It's an act of resistance, it's an act of resilience, it, it supports identity, it supports the, the self-esteem, and also if, if people are feeling that they've lost themselves in a world full of chaos, it can bring you back closer to your true self, because speaking your own language in your own way isn't just around replacing words in English, it's actually about a world of you that's unique to ourselves. And the more that we can actually use that and celebrate that, the more us we will become and remain. Perfect. Bernadette, passing words? Uh, there's not much more I can add to what Amory and all has said, only that it should go into, as well as the, the, the schools, go into all the after school services into the crushes because the, the, the ones with the book with the pictures and them are absolutely lovely. And I just got a note in the middle of our meeting that my meeting tomorrow is cancelled. So my bank on the weekend starts now. <laughs> I'm happy. Brilliant. Very parting words. Parting words. Uh, I hope we all meet again and soon and uh, can't lose can't like parting words. <laughs> Could, could, I, could I just say as well, just um, thanks before Joe, if you before you close the the meeting, Joe. Just thanks everyone for 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 kids for kids old reaching out to STSG um, to take part in this event. It's 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 been a privilege as well, and a, and a privilege to, to to have all the panelists on here. So I just want to say thanks to Bernadette and Owen and Anne Marie and Mary and Eileen who left before and yourself, Joe. And also to Kira as well, who's been doing a, a lot of work there behind oh, and build up okay. to it. So she's been great. So I just want to say thanks for, for myself as as well. Um, it's just been a, a great event um, to be to be a part of, and that it'll be still be up on our Facebook page, and we'll put it up on YouTube. It might be it might be tomorrow we get up on YouTube, but it, it'll be there for anyone to watch again who might have missed it. So I just want to say thanks to everyone as well. Thank you. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thanks, thank you, uh, Jamie and Bernadette, for hosting the event and for partnering with us on it. It's it's been fantastic, and we look forward to partnering with you on on more initiatives in the, in the future. Um, and you know, there's there's been lots of issues raised. Um, and thanks to Eileen, Senator Eileen Flynn as well for for launching the book. Um, but it is heartening to hear optimism as well. You know, in there, I think that that's a really sort of positive thing to, to go to, to take away um and uh, i suppose i did forget to mention that we dedicated that the, the this second edition of the book to orla kenny who um who was our creative director and who sadly passed away in 2018 and she yes. would be, she for such a long time she talked about about reprinting this book so i know she would be really really delighted to know that we have launched it today and so just to say a huge thanks to everyone um, who's who's come along from all different parts of the world. And um, and we we welcome continuations of this conversation with anyone who wants to contact us. As Anne-Marie said on Twitter, you can visit our website at kidzone.ie. That's K-I-D-S-O-W-N dot I-E. And um, or just, you know, email us or we, we, we'd love to have contact from people who are interested in, in the book. Thank you. Rampaign on the house. <laughs> Ta -da! Long may the sunshine over the weekend. <laughs> and thanks everyone for all the lovely everybody. comments. The great comments as well, everyone. And Mary, there was one comment now for you, I think for Marion Brown, that uh, you... Um, Mary Bradley still owes me for the wine we drank on Tuesday night before Newbridge workshop. <laughs> um, and she, I admit she made the dinner every Tuesday night. That's my husband's memory of the process. Great dinner. So, 
I'm not sure what that's about, but I just said I mentioned that, Mary. It's um, all true. It's all true. Yes. <laughs> Lovely meeting you. Lovely meeting you. Enjoy your weekend. On that note, thank you very much. We'll say goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Have a moony, Thanks, everybody.